All right, well, let's, um, this is extremely informal. So I will put slides up, and then we can discuss them. <laughs> um, and you know, the other thing too, I'm wondering, like climbing the Drupal ladder, it sounds like somebody's gonna help me learn how to use Drupal, but it's really not. <laughs> um, it's climbing the Drupal ladder, it is about that, but it's about teaching people how to contribute and in the process actually learning Drupal. Howdy, Jess. <laughs> That's all right, we're informal, we're all friends, we're just chilling, we should have beer. Um, although I guess it's technically before noon, so. Isn't it normal in most places? <laughs> I don't know. I, I watched the Super Bowl the other day and it started at 10.30 in the morning. And I do not watch the Super Bowl without beer. <laughs> so. And the people at the bar did not seem at all distressed by that. So I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, so the, the concept behind the Drupal ladder is actually uh, contribution, not, ne not just personally learning Drupal and figuring things out, um, but actually learning through contributing and learning how to contribute, which is its own separate world of confusion for people, all right? <clears throat> so um, I'm just gonna run through like, what does that mean? Like, what is the ladder specifically in terms of a project? What has happened up to the point? Goals, both real and fictitious, and then some concept of perhaps how we're trying to get there. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but, so this was the main problem that was identified, right? There just aren't enough people who are contributing. There are a lot of people contributing and a lot more than there used to be, but at the end of the day, it's a huge amount of work and you have millions of people around the world relying on code that very, very, very few people actually do anything to help make happen. So this problem was identified, um, well, it's been identified by many people over time, but specifically for this project, um, Brian Hirsch sort of tried to put a name on it and then actually come up with a solution which was revolutionary <laughs> to try and break it down that way. Um, these are Jess's slides. We still use them. I, really should update this. I know, <laughs> but you know, but whether the specifics of it don't matter, right? The pattern matters, and um, so so this is the number number of core contributors over time per release of Drupal. So you can see it's gone up, it goes up pretty steadily. Um, it's pretty that looks awesome, and you know for eight we're we're over a thousand, so it's, it's it continues to go up with every release. But if you flip it around and you look at it as a percentage of people, it's gone down extremely dramatically, right? So numbers, raw numbers, are a little bit deceptive when you're looking at that. My previous slide. Yeah. Oops. What did you use to create that statistic in terms of what is a core patch? An issue? This is based on the commit mentions in version control. Yeah. And pulls it all out. Yeah. So, you know, obviously people contribute to core in a lot of ways that aren't in a commit message. But still, as your general trend, this is still reflective of like the general idea of what we're talking about here, which is numbers going up, but percentage going way down because the number of people who are actually using Drupal has explodified. Um, and, and so our percentage of people who are contributing out of that number has, is just keeps decreasing dramatically. Um, and so you think of it, you know, like you have basically this like mountain that's being carried by, uh, you know, a couple of ants who are trying to like, you know, and you know, ants are strong <laughs> and they carry a long way and it's been doing, you know, they're doing an amazing job of doing that, but how sustainable is that? If we continue to have this number go down and down and down and down, it's not like a very bright future for having core continue to be what we all rely on every day. So, not good. And you'll notice that these uh, percentages over here are not full percentages. There's a point 
<laughs> there, sorry. So this is, this is like 0.1. It's not 1%. <laughs> it's a tenth of a percent. One in one <laughs> right, okay? So it's really teeny. <laughs> um, now, this, this, these numbers are a bit old, um, but again, the general thing. I think I did these numbers last fall when I did this at Bad Camp. But um, <clears throat> there were over 7,000 core issues that were, that, at the time, um, that were open in various states of open, broken down into those percentages. And so 1% of them were RTBC, which is ready to be committed, or <clears throat> reviewed and tested by the community. You can always tell like an old schooler, I think. Sorry. Um, everything else is in some state of needing work, and over half of them were active. Just nothing, just silence. That is what we're asking that 0.1% of the Drupal community to do for us. That's not cool. <laughs> um, I'm sure some of you have seen this before. Um, <laughs> you know, things are, getting, things are getting more complex. It's getting harder and harder to, to actually I, from, I can speak to this from personal experience. So I started using Drupal right around the 4.7 to 5 transition. Um, I had first looked at it at 4.6 and kind of headed on out and <laughs> then came back around again later. Um, and, and I am not, I don't have a programming background. I'm an anthropologist, <laughs> I was. Um, and so everything that I've learned about tech, like the big button on the front makes it go, like things like that, right? So I, and I, so I taught myself everything. And so what I know about like say PHP and all of that stuff, I learned because of learning Drupal and how to get stuff done with Drupal. And so like I jumped in and, and started learning and figuring things out and, and having some grasp of the beast that I had to work with. Um, and even now, I've been using Drupal, and I've been working with it for seven years. And every time a new v version of Drupal comes along, I'm a little bit like, whoa, OK. I'm going to need to go into a hole for a month and figure out what is going on. Right? It feels like there's just more, more complex pieces. There's, there's, uh, I mean, there is. There's more code. A lot of it is tests, which is awesome. But still, there's more stuff that's going on. Um, and honestly, from my perspective, again, sort of coming forward is that there are new practices, new best practices in development and coding that are going on that I'm not familiar with because I've just been doing this, the same old thing in the, in the Drupal way. And so I have, it's good, but it doesn't lessen the pain that I can't now just jump in and start building sites the way I did in the last version um, where I understood what was going on. Um, so, and this, makes it a lot harder for people to actually get involved with core because you end up being overwhelmed by this cliff of, I don't even understand how to build with this. How would I possibly help you make it into something you could build with? Like, I, how do you break that into little pieces? I, can't, I don't even get the big piece. So that makes it quite scary. Um, and so that, all of this is just sort of like that problem that we're looking at to try and solve. So that problem is, we don't have enough people who are contributing to core. And there are reasons for that. The solution um, was this Drupal ladder uh, that ended up getting created. And uh, the idea behind the Drupal ladder is to literally create a ladder that has rungs on it. And people move up through the rungs. Um, and it has to start at a very, the, like the bottom level. There's like this basic entry point of all right, let's get Drupal installed. That's your first step. Once you do that, you then have the prerequisite skills to move to the next level and do the next step and work your way up. So instead of trying to jump in at the beast, you know, at the top and try and take on everything, break it into little teeny bite-sized chunks and let people walk their way through in bite-sized chunks so that you basically don't freak out. <laughs> That's the idea. The, uh, the, the first several steps of the ladder 
um, are just getting started, sort of getting set up, getting oriented, making sure that you have the tools that you're going to need and understanding how they work. Then uh, once that's, that sort of phase of the ladder is completed, then you move into actually contributing. So you've gotten things set up, you understand the tools, now actually take a bite-sized chunk of something and do something with it and understand how the process really works. Um, and then, of course, the ultimate goal is to actually get people not just sort of contribute on the edges, but actually moving into the, the ranks of people who are helping to maintain and sustain over a longer period. Um, obviously, we want contributions, period. And if you do a contribution, you spend half an hour, and you contribute to an issue on core, and then you, we never see you again, that is still awesome. And we'll, you know, we'll take that as a community, of course. But ultimately, of course, the idea is to get more people who are actually helping us sustain. You're going to burn people out. Like you have, so yeah, we have over a thousand people who've contributed to Drupal 8 so far. A lot of those people have done, you know, a patch here, a patch there, one or two things. A very, very, very small number of those people are the people who month after month after month are sustaining the work and carrying big ideas forward because chipping away at a little teeny bit is awesome, but you can't make the system that we are all using by just little teeny little chippy bits. There's, at some level, there's got to be a plan. There's got to be large architectural decisions. And the amount of work to get from idea to implementation on those is, is massive. So we need to not just contribute here and there, but we need to also build a, a wider structure of maintenance and sustainability. Because you end up with having like a handful of people who have dedicated two years of their life to making this happen, and they're just getting tired. They're going to be done. They want to go play with their kids, right? <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. It's actually scary how many people are more like, I remember when I used to build Drupal sites. And now I just build Drupal. <laughs> yeah. So it's, and, and the thing is, it's like, I'm not, I don't think the goal is to say, okay, now you should be the new maintainer for this thing so that Larry can go have a life. It's creating a much broader base so that things can be handed off and so people can be like, tag out, let me take a break, you know, and there's somebody else there so that everything doesn't just stop dead in the water. You know, it's, it's more about having a system of being able to hand things out and support each other. And it does require like a longer term understanding of the, the project, the problems that are involved and things like that. So ultimately, that's why that goal is there. Like people come and they look at the, the ladder on the, on the Drupal ladder site and they're like, okay, cool, I can install Drupal. I got it, we're rocking it, you know. Ooh, I'm doing an issue, look at me go. And then they, get, they look at the top of the ladder and they're like, whatever with this like maintaining core component thing, I'm out, <laughs> you know. Um, but, but like, <laughs> again, it's not like we're trying to like make, like we're not trying to like replace like the, the, that one failure point with just another one failure point. We're trying to broaden the base so that we don't have those failure points like that. Um, so maintaining things does not mean you are the only person on the planet. It's like, can you help support longer term maintenance of these things um, in lots of different ways? It doesn't mean you have to be the, the, you know, the crazy person running around drawing stuff up on the board and saying, this is what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do it, you know? Um, so that's the, the basic idea with the ladder is break stuff down, make things accomplishable step by step, and make sure that each step prepares you for the next step. I mean, having random unrelated steps would be kind of stupid in a ladder because you'd start going up this side of the house and then all of a sudden you'd be on the other side of the house and you would fall into the pond and then it would be ugly and it just doesn't make sense. So that's the concept um, with the ladder. And <clears throat> So this was, uh, the ladder was sort of originally, the concept of it and the, the creation of the ladder star started in Boston two years ago now, I guess, 2011. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, it was like the fall, yeah. So yeah, year and a half. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, we're in the future. Everything's messed up. <laughs> Days, it's years, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Totally. Um, but so the idea, like, 
Brian Hirsch like came up with this idea of like, okay, here's a way we could do it. Let's like chunk things up and break things down and create this ladder. And what he did is he got the local uh, user group in Boston to help him with this concept because it was like great to talk about it in theory, but how does that actually work in the real world? And so what they, the user group did is they started coming up with, okay, what, how, what lessons do we need? Let's sort of start writing things up. But then how do you actually get people to do them? And how does that like, the, literally, how does that process work? Um, writing a bunch of lessons does not mean that suddenly people know things. It doesn't magically work that way. Surprising, I know, shocking, but true. So what they ended up doing after spending months sort of prototyping all of this stuff out is they came up with um, doing sprints at the meetups and keeping the sprints small enough so that it was a meetup-sized chunk of something that people could do. Um, and so the, and there are two kinds of sprints. The first kind of sprint is this learn sprint, and that basically covers that getting started section of the ladder, that stuff at the bottom. What are the tools people need? What are the processes that are in place? What's going on here? Um, and so at a meetup, they would get together, and people would look at where they were on the ladder in terms of, well, I already have Drupal installed, but I don't have Git installed. And so the people who were on the same rung of the ladder would get together in little groups at the meetup and they would all work on a lesson together and help each other get like through that lesson and get set up. Um, and most of those lessons are designed to be about 15 to 20 minutes. So you can have a meetup, everybody talks, everybody explains what's happening, you break out, everybody does their lesson and then everybody sort of comes back together and then you know gets pizza and does whatever <laughs> you want to do with your meetup kind of a thing. Um, and so they would do that at meetups to kind of get everybody sort of up to the same place and everybody understanding what the tools were. <clears throat> and then the other kind of sprint they had lines up with that contribute section, that second step, which is to actually do stuff. And they tried a lot of different things um, in terms of how to actually work on issues. <laughs> um, because as Jess knows, she runs the, the core mentoring uh, program and you know even if you have people who are super enthusiastic and have the tools available you get to the drupal.org issue queue and it's just like a cartoon <laughs> you know and you're, it's like oh my god it's so overwhelming it's not clear where you can begin if you should be touching that issue or not like scary land um, and so yeah, so the, the way they set up the issue sprints is that you, before a meetup, you go through and identify issues um, that people can work on. And then people come in and actually pair up together. So you work on it as a team, so you're not sort of floating on your own in the ocean, um, and work through it together. And you know, if you have a larger meetup where you have many pairs, you, know, you can also sort of help each other and see who knows what about things. But this is something that you know you can do in a meetup of two, right? You need two people uh, to do this. So you can be like, you know, um, I want to work on uh, X Y Z issue, and uh, I'm going to go be at the cafe at blah blah blah. Will somebody meet me there, and we can work on this issue together? Okay, it's not complicated overhead. <laughs> you need an internet connection, maybe. <laughs> depends what depends on what issue you're working on, right? Um, so, uh, and the other thing that, that's really important about this, and this is very related to the whole core mentoring world as well, is that <clears throat> there are lots and lots of issues on core that don't, you don't have to be a coder, you don't have to be a developer in order to help. Um, and so it's a matter of like finding issues that people can achieve with the skills that they have. And there are lots of those out there. Uh, the, the core mentoring uh, program has a website uh, to sort of break out like tasks that are related to issues in a sort of digestible way, I would say. Uh, and the, the Drupal ladder actually has its own little subset. I'm not sure of the status of that though. Yeah, question. What is this core mentoring program that I speak of? Yes, uh, so the core mentoring program has been around for, I guess, roughly the same amount of time, yeah? Right, and so the, the idea with the, the core mentoring program is basically you actually have mentors. People who are working on core and have a sense of the lay of the land and understand the larger picture of what's going on, 
you can show up on IRC at set times, um, and I believe I might have a link in the slides. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1 p.m. in Australia, in this time zone, yeah. Yeah, but you can show up on IRC, and then of course we also do events uh, we're like live at camps and cons and stuff like that. We do live sprints where people can get together. But the idea is you show up, you want to help, we make sure that you have the tools and processes in place, and then somebody says, well, here's an issue you could work on. Or you can go, well, I'd kind of like to work on this issue, but, you know, is that crazy? Um, and you can get some feedback for helping you figure out where to start and find a little piece that's going to work for you. And as you work through it, if you, like, have questions like, oh, I don't know, I was trying to do this, and now, now I'm lost, and it doesn't make any sense to me anymore. Did I like, miss some major piece of what's going on? You have other people around to ask and get feedback from and help you work through the process. And, okay, I did all the work, and I made it work. I need to make a patch now. How's it work again? Um, and they can walk you through that process. So that's the thing is you actually have people who are involved with CORE understand what's happening. And their whole focus in those set periods of time is to make sure that you get through that process and that you understand what it is that's going on. So, um, and it's interesting because the core mentoring stuff started and the Drupal Ladder stuff started sort of in their own little separate world, both basically trying to accomplish the same thing. Um, and we've been spending time sort of trying to bring them more into line with each other, I think, um, which hasn't really been that hard. It was just a matter of, oh, you're doing that. Huh, we're doing this. That's crazy. Uh, maybe we should talk. I don't know. Let's communicate, share a little bit. So um, definitely been last year has been quite a lot of that, I think. Um, <clears throat> so learn sprints, issue sprints. The idea behind these is that they are uh, small things that can be done at, at a meetup level. You don't need a major event. You don't need to have craziness. Um, actually, in Denmark, um, I started doing some of this in the Copenhagen group. And I timed our meetups so that they match up with the core mentoring hours on Wednesday nights in Europe. Um, and so I don't even have to take on the responsibility of figuring things out. Because um, often what I'm doing is I do learn sprints. Like I, I lead a learn sprint because I have a lot of people who don't really have much of an idea of what's going on in terms of the tools and processes. So I do the learn sprints, but for people who are experienced and want to just dive in and work on things, then I can say, look, core mentoring is going on in IRC. You can hang out with those people and talk to them, and they'll get you issues and get you started while I'm working with people on getting their local development environment set up and that kind of a thing. Um, that's really worked out really well for us in terms of meetups to sort of help, again, like, because I can't run everything. I'm not, I'm not good with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like Jess. I can't keep a million things in my mind at the same time. What can people say that and how wrong they are? You pull it off quite well, lady. Um, so, and although I have to say, like, if you're doing if if you're doing a specific issue sprint, like where you actually are, like, you have lots of groups that are going to be pairing up and working on issues together and things like that. Um, a longer meetup, like a two-hour meetup, ends up making a lot more sense. Um, in a one hour meetup, by the time you've explained what's going on, everybody gets set up, everybody gets going, they start to work on issues. Working on an issue is not normally a 15 or 20 minute task. Um, so you need to allow time for that. Another thing that we do in uh, Denmark occasionally is we do like just a, a Drupal day, a Drupal, Drupal sprint day. We just make up our own sprint. We find some company who's willing to have a venue, and then we just everybody shows up. But we have, you know, some people can just show up for whatever, but we have this kind of structure in place for a lot of the people who are coming um, so that we have the time to let people actually really work on issues. But we have it planned in advance as an issue sprint. It just gives us a little more elbow room to make it happen. So, yeah. So, the whole goal of this, uh, this thing, this is really, this is the goal. This is the goal that Brian Hirsch has stated for us, um, is that instead of 0.1%, that we should be at 1% in a year. Crazy dude. But you know, if you don't set high goals, you're never gonna, you're never gonna see how far you can push yourself. Um, it it is, is, is crazy. It sounds crazy. Um, 
And, but one of the, so I was first introduced to the Drupal Ladder in DrupalCon Denver, which was March last year, and when Brian sort of presented this. Like they had done all of this work in the user group, um, sort of figured things out, and then at Denver they were like, okay, this is what we've done. We figured this out so far, we need the rest of the community to help us make this happen. Um, and one of the reasons that I ended up getting involved in the latter was not because, I mean, yay, 1% by 2014, it's a great idea. Um, it's a, it is a great idea. There's lots of great ideas in this community. <laughs> we are full of great ideas. Uh, but the reason that I got involved with it and got kind of excited is because Brian had an actual plan. Like he'd actually thought this through in terms of reality. It was shocking and exciting at the same time. So, um, so there is a bit of a plan. So I'm gonna talk about sort of like what's happened so far and then sort of what our plan from the point where we are now is um, and, and how you guys can help. Um, so the Boston experiment, which I said was like the, the proof of concept thing. So that was just user group working on stuff, writing the lessons, coming out with a ladder, uh, they wrote a, an actual whole distribution and, so that, and created the website that exists for it. And all of that stuff was done by the local user group before we got to um, DrupalCon Denver. Um, and then between uh, Denver and Munich, which is August, um, there was this goal. These were the goals um, that they had. And we did actually accomplish these goals um, to add 10 user groups because Boston was doing this. We wanted to add 10 more user groups to be doing it and giving feedback because part of it is Boston had done this and they'd come up with a plan that worked for them. But when you start translating that to other groups, what needs to change? Or like what, what are modifications that people can be making to make it really work for them? Um, <clears throat> they wanted to relaunch, relaunch DrupalLadder.org. Um, it has had a lot of improvements made to it now. Um, Right, there's like sort of two contributing things going on here. One is contributing to core and then the ladder itself. Um, there's a website, people need to run it. You know, people want improvements. Um, everybody wants it to be fancy and flashy and cool um, and as a useful tool. Um, so they did a bunch of work on that and the Drupal ladder website itself actually uses a distro um, so that you can recreate that uh, yourself locally, the entire ladder website with all of the ladders and everything like that. Um, <clears throat> the IB, and it also includes code samples. Um, it includes like buggy code that people can use to go through the lessons to, to learn how, what they're fixing and things like that and how the process works. So all of that is wrapped up together so you can always just grab that and like have that and then everybody would have like exactly the same stuff um, or you don't even need to be online. Um, you can use the lessons and you have all of the sample code and everything like that locally and you can just run it like on the beach or something like that. As you do. <laughs> and then the last thing, this wasn't a goal, uh, the steering committee, um, but it was something that, that ended up coming up in August uh, when we met in Munich. There were a couple of us who thought this was interesting and cool and we figured we'd help. And Brian um, got us all together and basically asked if we would work as a committee because he was one person who works full time um, and has a life uh, as much as he tries to as much as he can um, living between two cities which adds extra time to having your life um, so so he just wanted to have help to help spread the load in some sort of I mean not official capacity but in a way like you know like to, to know like this is someone who's going to take that so he doesn't have to think about that anymore kind of a thing so we sort of came up with that to help sort of continue to drive things forward um, so this on the steering committee so I manage the lessons the actual ladder lessons that are written manage all of this is quite loose <laughs> but, uh, um, but the idea is like if someone wants to write new lessons or if there's a new ladder that needs to be created, I would be the point person and from here I can help get everything sorted out. Um, Brian himself works on the, the distribution, so the underlying website and the distribution that sort of powers that and, and some new features that need to go into it, new code samples to be added for you know testing things and stuff like that. Um, Karen Cassio. Um, she is helping coordinate the learn sprint stuff. So I'm coordinating, you know, ladders and ladder improvements and edits to the lessons themselves. 
but she's helping people like, okay, I have a meetup group, now what do I do? And getting materials for people to use for the, for the Learn Sprints. Um, she's also working on um, getting it so that people can register their meetup group as a, as a ladder group um, so that we can just make sure that we have better communication going on with people and so that we can honestly see if we're making our goals of getting more people actually doing them, um, things like that. Um, and then Kay is, uh, Kay was part of the original uh, Boston group as well. His thing is about coordinating with external projects. And by external projects, we mean other documentation kinds of things or other efforts that are being done in the same realm. And because like there's a lot of concern around like Drupal Ladder has all of this stuff on lessons and, and how to do these tasks. Um, but we have all this documentation on Drupal.org and the handbook. Like, are we duplicating effort? Are we not? How do we bring those together? That kind of stuff. So that's what Kay's uh, main focus has been. Also, we, Brock was on the committee, and Brock was responsible uh, for issue sprint stuff. Uh, Brock is stepping down. Uh, one of the things about the steering committee is we are each volunteers as well. And so there comes a time when we will need to also broaden our base <laughs> um, and have other people who are willing to help with these things. Um, because, yeah, only so much time in a day. Here's a quick sort of timeline on sort of what's been going on. Um, so between Munich and Sydney, the goal was to sort of add, add another, get more than 20 user groups. So the original goal between, before Munich was to get 10 then the idea is, okay, by, by now we should be up over 20. I believe that we are. I don't have the actual list of meetup groups that are involved, but I'm fairly certain that we are well over 20 by now. Um, and creating ladder outlines for all of the Drupal 8 initiatives, all the big pieces of what's new in Drupal 8. Um, we have a ladder on, here's how you get set up with things, but now we wanna drill into the specific pieces of of Drupal 8, not just a generic, that's eh, core, go work on it. Um, we want to create individual ladders with those bite-sized, chunkable lessons for each facet of Drupal. Um, so uh, like uh, multilingual initiative. How does multilingual in Drupal 8 work? Well, Let's create a ladder that has lessons that starts off with install a site with another language and then work your way deeper and deeper into the bowels of what is running that system and how it actually operates so that you actually can become skilled enough to assist in that area, actually understanding what's going on, but starting from the basics of here's how you install it and use it in the interface, what does that mean in the back end, and, and, and so on. So we want to get outlines for all of that stuff. We aren't we don't have all the outlines done. Part of that is getting the initiative leads uh, sort of just nailed down long enough. <laughs> but, but you know, it's also, it's, it's proven to also be a bit complicated because it's a moving target. So creating an outline on a moving target is interesting to say the least. Um, and so it's been more challenging than it sounds just by, oh, could create an outline. Why not create an outline on how to do things? Um, and then, you know, like two months later, it's like, that outline doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> so, um, so, but one of the things that I want to work on uh, tomorrow at the sprint, which I'll talk about more later, um, but I want to work on getting these outlines at least started um, so that we have a, a more of an idea of what we need to do. Um, feature freeze is right after this conference, like in 10 days. <laughs> no heart attacks, please. Um, and, uh, and then in Portland, in, we have DrupalCon in May. And at that point, we want to have over 30 user groups, which I think is really, really manageable, honestly. Like, we are very close to that at this point anyway. Um, so I kind of think we should revise that upwards even um, as a goal between now and May. I mean, geez, we should be able to get over 50, I think. But it's only if people actually get out there and do it. Um, and we actually want to get the actual lessons written <laughs> for all that Drupal 8 stuff. The idea being that in Portland, we're going to have 3,000 people. Um, and if we actually have lessons written and people can just sit down and work their way through a lesson and then begin contributing, 
it would be amazing and we could get a lot of work done. Um, so that's why that's a big goal for us because we'll be after feature freeze, we'll be before code freeze, there's gonna be a lot of work that needs to happen to kind of polish off all the stuff that's, that's been put in. Um, and people need to understand how that stuff works. Nobody's gonna help if they don't understand it. So that's, that's our, our next big goal that we're in. Um, code freeze will happen after that, uh, before Prague. These are Brian's goals. <laughs> <laughs> Every active user group has an issue sprint at some point, at least once. Um, and that, to achieve that goal, means that we need to have people who understand how issue sprints run and can assist uh, user groups getting those set up. And we need to actually have the tools and the lessons available for people to get up to speed on things. Um, so we have to have sort of our, our underlying ladder infrastructure stuff kind of in place to then go out to every user group and just be like, look, just do this once. It's so easy. All you have to do is this, this, and this, and we have these people here to assist you. Um, just schedule a time and we will help you make it happen. But that, obviously, we're not quite at that stage. There's a lot of work that needs to happen to get there. Um, he also wants to <laughs> identify two out of every 100 active users as potential contributors. So this is actually doing active outreach instead of expecting people to come to us. Um, but it's the kind of thing like being at a meetup or being at an event, being in an IRC channel for a local community um, and chatting with people and actually sorting out like, hey, you know, there's something that you could help me with and work on. Um, you know, would you be interested in, in helping out with something? Um, and we have this wonderful structure in place that makes it easy and things like that. And actively reaching out and finding people that can contribute rather than expecting people to come to us. So definitely a different step in terms of goals. But that is the only way that we're gonna get to that mythical 1%. Right. Totally. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. We should talk. Yeah. <laughs> Did somebody say work? <laughs> um, so this is, yeah, so this is the idea for this year is to get ourselves to this place, you know, at Prague, basically. So that at Prague, when we talk about, like, where are things and what are we doing, this is what we're doing. Um, that we are, that we have gotten like all of the user groups that we know about sort of engaged in some fashion. And we've come up with a way that makes it, because for me, like, you know, reaching out to people, like you, I can reach out to people, but what am I offering them right now is, is a, still a bit of confusion. I mean, we have a lot of great things in place, but the more sort of structure we can put in place that, that people just feel like they can just walk through the steps without big scary gray gaps and they don't know what happens when you fall there, um, the much more likely you are to actually get that person to come on board. So, so really like, yes, this is like, you know, this is that goal by Prague, but the way to achieve this goal is all of that other stuff of getting all of that other structure in place so that by the time we get to Prague, we just tell people, hey, you're talking. You seem to be, you know, like you're functioning. Uh, do you want to come help? Because it's pretty easy to help. You can just pop over here for you know half an hour and get you up to speed. We have everything in place, and you can actually have a patch you work on get committed to core, um, and your code will work on you know websites, millions of websites around the world. It's it's a pretty cool, powerful thing. But if you don't have a a friendly road to get people there, um, they're a lot less likely to try and take that chance. Um, and then of course. Um, Drupal 8 is going to come out sometime between Prague and the next DrupalCon in the US. 
we assume. <laughs> it better, or I think several people are gonna lose their minds. Um, and so the idea is that by the time we get to that, that DrupalCon in the US a year from now, um, that we will be at 1%. I mean, that's what 1% is, one out of every 100 active users. Right now we're at one out of every 1,000. So that's the plan to get there. It's awesome because it like it's on a slide and there's like these like little transitions and things and like it just moves along and it looks really easy. <laughs> I'm like, yes, we made it. We are there, man. Not. Um, so in terms of immediate goals, <laughs> it's outside the big picture. Um, like I said, uh, Karen's been uh, working towards like reaching out to user groups um, and registering groups. I don't know if she actually has that stuff set up yet, but that's her sort of on her agenda. She's had quite a lot going on. Actually, I would say like everybody in the steering committee kind of checked out for the months of December and January. Um, holidays, family, lots of stuff. So, um, but she's working on, that is like a goal of hers to, to, to be able to figure out what's going on with the Learn Sprints and uh, creating this Learn Sprint kit. Um, so I have a meetup I don't want to do a learn sprint. All right, here, download this. These are materials. Here's a presentation you can use. This is, you know, all of the kind of step-by-step, play-by-play stuff. Um, issue sprints. Brock did a lot of work on this. Um, so, again, creating resources for people who want to do an issue sprint because it's quite a different activity um, and it requires sort of different resources and different skills even. Um, <clears throat> And we did create this uh, issue tracking tool for ladders. So drupaloffice-hours.org, the core dot drupaloffice-hours.org is what the core mentoring team uses for, and that's what they'll be using like this weekend to assign tasks to people who want to help break things down. Um, but we also created um, a separate one for the ladder. So if you're doing an issue sprint for the Drupal ladder, you aren't getting in necessarily messing with the core mentoring teams set up. You can set up your own. You can just sort of do your own little custom. This is our world that we want to work on and we're going to make our own little tasks and use that for the sprint. Um, and then one of the things Brock really wanted to also try and figure out is making sure that people are getting mentored between the sprints. And I think honestly the biggest thing for that is to get people in touch with the, the Drupal core mentoring team and make sure that the, that people understand that that resource is available every week. And you can always check in with that, and you can always have access to that, and keep going. You don't have to wait for your meetup in order to work on things. If you want to work on stuff, but a lot of people don't know that that exists or how that works, um, and so once you sort of introduce people to that and make people feel comfortable with that process, then there's stuff that's available all the time and people can kind of keep going. And also, like in a meetup, people do an issue sprint and they just don't have time to finish. You know, the meetup ends, gotta go home. Um, and then it's like, wait, do I have to wait a month or two months for the next meetup to keep working on my issue? Like, that seems weird. Um, so just keeping things rolling along. Um, on the lessons, we've been doing a lot of reviewing and revising of the existing lessons in that main ladder. Um, as I said, we need to create Drupal 8 ladders for each of the initiatives. Ultimately, we're going to create ladders for each of the major core components. Um, but for now, these are the new big, scary, scary things and things that need a lot of work and help. Um, <clears throat> so that's going to happen before that sub ladders for all major components thing happens. Um, but ultimately, like, you know, if I'm interested in Drupal's file handling system, um, I should be able to go and find a ladder and understand how does, how does Drupal file handling work. Um, get myself involved into that in, in deep enough to understand how it works and then I can help contribute and fix it, make it better, make the changes I want. Um, so, these are ways that you all can actually get involved and help. Um, honestly, just spreading the word so that people even know that these resources exist and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, it's a simple, simple thing. Going to a meetup and just, we actually have um, on the drupalladder.org website, there's a resources tab and we have slides you can download. We actually have a video that's like a 12 minute video. So if you don't wanna do a lightning talk, you can just 
play it and <laughs> sit in the corner because I don't want to talk in front of people. Um, you can just play the video for a lightning talk sort of size session or something like that to just introduce people to the idea of it. Bring it up in local meetups um, and, and try and get people on board. Uh, that in and of itself is a huge help uh, for us. Um, climbing the ladder yourself. You don't have to do it in a meetup. Um, we find it's a lot more effective doing that kind of stuff in a meetup where people work together, help each other, that community aspect, create a tie with somebody, um, you know, a bond, like, yeah, we totally had to work out that weird ass server configuration together. <laughs> um, organizing the sprints yourself, like I said earlier, it's not a huge, crazy overhead thing. You don't need some big venue. You don't need a lot of planning around it. What you need to do is you need to just say, I want to do this. Does anybody want to do it with me? Is there one other person out there who wants to do this? Let's find a place to meet up and sit down and just do it and see how it works. Um, and then writing lessons as well. Um, a lot of people really shy away from this, <laughs> um, which is, I understand and is fine, but uh, also uh, more so than even just writing lessons, also helping to edit the lessons. Like doing the lessons and getting feedback on them is really, really useful as well. Um, but we do, we have a lot of ladders that need to be written. And you know what, like, we have all these initiatives. I don't know them either. Just because I'm the, just because I'm the steering committee person for, for the ladders doesn't mean that I know how to write these lessons either. I'm going to have to do the same thing anybody else would, which is learn what's going on. Ask the people who are involved in core and say, okay, so we have this outline, I'm at this step, and I've managed to install Drupal 8 with another language. Um, but now I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, convert something to something. Uh, I don't quite know how that works. Can you help me? Um, that's how these are going to get written. But it's not like you have to sit in the corner and know everything. You're not like this font of knowledge. Um, you're going to have to do the same thing I do because I have no idea how any of this stuff works <laughs> either. But I'm going to learn and I'm going to write a lesson. And then other people are going to learn and they're going to improve on that lesson. And then we're all going to get there in the end. Um, just some stuff uh, if you want to sort of track down and become part of the conversation for the Drupal Ladder itself. The Drupal Ladder website is at drupalladder.org. Um, we do, the group discussion is basically where, you know, I have a meetup and I want to do something, I have some questions, or I just want to share, hey, we're going to do this, it's pretty awesome. Um, if you do have a meetup that has a Drupal Ladder sort of uh, event with it, um, you can post the event on groups.drupal.org for your local uh, meetup, but you can also cross post it into the Drupal Ladder group, um, and we encourage that so that we know and that everybody sort of working with Drupal Ladder stuff understands it like that. And it's like, hey, maybe I can make sure I'm available on IRC or something if anybody has questions when that happens. Um, the Twitter account's really not used, but it's up there. <laughs> um, and then we do have a Drupal Dash Ladder IRC channel. Um, it's not uh, there's not a whole lot of activity in it all the time, but there are a lot of people just hanging out in the channel. Sort of like, you know, it's in that list of Drupal channels that I log into when I go into IRC kind of thing. So, tomorrow, you could actually do some of these things if you wanted to. Uh, we actually have, so there's the code sprint that's going on all day, 9 to 5. Um, that Jess is going to be leading up in the Centennial Room. Um, so you can actually just come in and work on stuff if you want to. Um, in the morning, I'm going to be doing a community tools workshop, which is for people who don't have anything sort of set up and don't understand what tools we have. I'm going to work through um, what the issue queue is all about, how that issue queue works, how to use IRC, actually getting on IRC and talking with other people, then uh, and getting a local web development environment set up, so a local web server, uh, and Git, so that you can install Drupal 8. Um, and get, get it running on your local machine. Because once you've gotten to that stage, um, you can start working on core. You don't even need all that, honestly, to start working on core. Um, truth be told, there's a lot of things you can just do because you, can, you have a Drupal.org account um, and, and then you're good. Um, but I'm going to be doing that in the morning to get people sort of set up with those tools if they want. And then in the afternoon, I'm not actually going to be sprinting on core issues. I'm going to be sprinting on Drupal Ladder. 
Um, so I'm going to be working on creating those outlines fleshed out and starting to work on Drupal ladder lessons. Um, the outlines that we do have right now are, um, or most complete outlines we have right now, is for the multilingual initiative and for the Twig uh, new theme system in, in core. Um, and so there's some stuff that's been written, and so there's lessons that need to be reviewed, like people need to actually walk through. And then there's some stuff that's like, we just need lessons written. We need someone to figure out how do you actually do this, spend the time, and then write down how they got through it. So if anybody wants to help with that stuff, I'll be doing that tomorrow afternoon after I do the workshop in the morning. Um, but other than that, you can, if you want to, like, you can show up tomorrow, and you can actually work on a core issue tomorrow regardless of skill setup or tools you have. Promise. Promise. Like, we're talking, I mean, like, a really, really, this is like, we use this as an example all the time. This is a really great example of the kinds of issues that, or ways that you can help an issue, is uh, we have issue summaries. So when you go to read an issue and it's got a million, million comments, there's actually a summary at the top that, so that people don't have to read everything and understand it. Those don't get written by magic. Um, and so picking an issue, reading through everything, and sort of summarizing the conversations and the decisions that have been made in that issue summary at the top of the issue is like a massive task that needs to be done, and you just need a Drupal.org account. Don't need a local web server, you don't need Drupal 8, nothing. So you can work on a core issue tomorrow, promise, no matter who you are. Um, so tomorrow, be here or no, be there, be square. But how would you say be it's here? here. It's yes. Like I know, but be here or be silly. Oh. Be here or be beer. No, <laughs> see, I'd rather be beer. <laughs> yeah, okay, just be here, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, and then feedback for this session um, if you want to leave some lovely feedback. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know, does, does anybody have questions in terms of like, does anybody think we're crazy? <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, so you are running these already? I've run them, I run them, I ran them in Copenhagen last year. I haven't done any this year. Okay. Yeah. Do you, like, is that buying the time with regular meetups or do you do it as every second? Meetup? That's our regular meetup. And oh. So yeah, and I mean again, this is going to depend on the community. But in Copenhagen, we had basically all we had was a beer meetup, um, and nothing. I mean, it was it was fun, and it was fun for those of us who know each other and can find each other in a bar. Um, <laughs> not particularly good for newcomers. Um, so I actually just introduced this as our meetup. Um, and we started off doing learn sprints, and then, like I said, like if new people come, I'll do learn sprints with them. But other than that, people can work on issue sprints because uh, we do it at the same time as the core mentoring team is available. And how do you go to like for a location to do that? Um, I go to the different companies. We have three major Drupal shops in Copenhagen. Um, we have a couple of other companies that use Drupal quite a lot, and so uh, yeah. And basically, I just started approaching them, and in in again, this depends on your community and the market, but like in that instance, going to one and just saying they're the ones who are going to do it all the time is maybe not politically dead on. And so we've actually rotated through all of them. Um, and they're just sort of like, okay, when's the next one I can do? Um, and we sort of just put it on the calendar and rotate it around. Some of them do just the uh, evening meetup thing. They have, you know, have the space and we all go to their office and they have a big room and we sit down and around the table and do. Um, but others have also um, hosted like a the weekend day kind of like the day long sprint thing, um, and yeah. But that's I've just gone to the different companies and said, hey, you're the one who says you want to hire people who know what's going on. Here's a way, simple way that you can do this. Just give us access to your office for an hour or two. So that's how we've done it. Because we had the same. Oh yeah. We had the same way when I started. It was just go to the company. Yeah. I changed yeah, exactly. You had a question? Um, yeah. So with the sprints, that really work like it's during the day or early part of the day rather than um, Depends on you 
and what time you have, what time other people have, when people want to do it. Like that's the reason we actually ended up doing this alternating thing in Copenhagen where one month it was an evening workshop, uh, evening meetup, you know, at a place. And then the other month it would be like a morning or a day thing on the weekend because some people could do it during the week. Some people could do it on the weekend. So we just started alternating them every other month um, just to sort of flesh it out. But that's just sort of what we came up with. You know? <laughs> yeah, with the issue queues, when you look at the issue, um, they have various prices, but one of the ratings that I have is like someone mentioned, going, well, the rating of this issue is actually really difficult, or it's a beginner, or it's a convenient. Because if you're coming in new and you want to maybe take on an issue, mm -hmm. like you said, it's really hard to sort of call through and work out what you're talking about and take on. Yeah. It is, yeah. So, so the, yeah. So the question is like, uh, you know, rating the, of the issue. So you have some sense of how difficult something is. That's what the core office hours task breakdown does. It breaks things into uh, three levels, A, B, and C. If you come tomorrow morning, you will learn all about it. Um, but it breaks them down sort of into skill level that's required, and it also doesn't break it into. It breaks it into tasks, not issues. Right? So one issue might have several tasks that are needed to accomplish the end result. And so the core office hour website actually breaks things into individual tasks with a ranking and rating on them. Um, so that you can be like, I don't, really, I don't want to deal with code. I don't even want to figure it out. I'm going to go for an A level. But no, I'm a hardcore developer. I just don't understand where to start. Go to C, you know? So yeah, so that's the core mentoring stuff is totally geared towards what you just asked. Core.drupalofficehours.org. Yeah. Yeah, we have the, this is the, where did I put the? I don't know where I put it. Every now and then I'll go to the shift and just back the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. I've been listening to Drew's yesterday and getting involved with Drew's conversations as a group. He said to me, I'm going to shift you, so it's that stuff you made. So last night I jumped in. You see some of the conversations that are around the crowd's talking. We're like, what is he saying? I can't understand the words. Well, you've got some skills and you want to be able to jump in and contribute because you're using the product for when it keeps you at work. Like it's just that barrier of entry. It's, it's overwhelming. Yeah. The, the, move from, the move from someone like me who's just in the community um, to contributor is a big step. I think contributor maintainer is an easy step. It might be in the community now. Mm -hmm. The issue of going to contributor maintainer is if you find the length of time I'm happy to be involved in that community. But of course, it's one of the things we're doing. I'm happy to have that for another five years. So I think that step's easier. It's just this initial one. But it is. And it's not so much just not willing to start with that. Yeah. Well, as someone who's gone through that step, I was at San Francisco and found the code plan. So that's how I did my first call back. It was like, for somebody who can help me. Yeah. I can't remember if it was Andy or someone, but yeah. Andy committed it while I was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. my next issue went for three years. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. 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 But I mean, just about getting people as well to reach out. Yeah. I think I think that's key. Having someone who can show you through those steps. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. hey, it's not that hard. You work on this. I'll help us work on that. Understanding the sub parts. Because I'm sort of at a stage where I, I'm this year I'm jumping off the edge, and going and going to be fine. <laughs> and um, but the understanding the parts because I, I mean I've had Steve up to four. And I can go through it, I know, and I can sort of understand it, but how it all can be. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, like, yeah, there's like this like big picture view of what's happening, but there are so many components that are complex and doing lots of interesting things, and like nobody, nobody knows it all. Nobody, nobody can. And there's really no reason to, honestly, right? Because we have a huge community. We can all help each other. You don't have to know everything to get something done. But being able to dive into something, it's just like, okay, files? Weird. Sorry. 
<laughs> Core mentoring hours stuff is not. Uh, hmm? Well, it, it, we, Tim and I wrote it this summer in our spare time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the thing. Is like these are all like the the core mentoring stuff and the Drupal ladder stuff is relatively new, but still it's been around for a year now, right? And like this is the thing. That's why I said like the number one thing is simply letting people know and getting the word out, and people will sift in and do things according to whatever their predilections are. That's fine. But a lot of people just don't know because it is way overwhelming to try and get involved. And like my, so my wife is a, is a, is a Drupal developer and she's worked on core. And for seven, she wrote a lot of tests and, and did a lot of work that went into core. And then she like took a break. She's like, all right, I'm done with core development and working on other things. And then she came back to start working on eight and she was like, whoa. And I'm like, this, she's a core developer. And she was like, I don't know what's happening here, you know? And it took her the time to sit down and sort of wrap her head around something she was interested in, talking to people and getting people to walk her through those initial pieces of the system she ended up like helping, which is the, the blocks and plugins stuff. But like, she was, you know, and this is somebody who was much more involved than I have, say, in the last one. Like, I haven't really been involved with core since six. Um, so. Yeah, I, letting people know that these tools exist, these people exist, the system that we're trying to grow it, helping us grow it is great, but just letting people know it exists and to u make use of it, I think is our big battle right now, is to just, just let people know. So. The benefits of what you're doing is so great. It helps Drupal, but you also educate people how to use Drupal, mm -hmm. and they, of course, train other people, and they feed that back into the education program as well. So it's very recursive. It's all win, win, win. Yeah, it's, it's just, so it's just time and focus, you know, which is sort of what all ends up coming down to. So, well, we are, I think, quite, quite out of time at this point. But um, I do appreciate you guys coming and talking. And uh, um, yeah, so hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. But if not, you know, like I said, tomorrow is like you don't have to be at the event in order to actually engage and take part in this stuff. So please do check it out and come back around if you don't come tomorrow. Sweet. Thanks, guys. End of show.